Okay, let's talk about the Platform App Builder certification. And in this particular lecture, I'm going to give you some of the history behind how this certification came to be and what its predecessor was. I've gone to certification.salesforce.com. And before we go into the different types of credentials here that can be found here, and especially for app builders for this course, I want to highlight something here on the right. I just happened to be recording this during the announcement of the Destination Success 2017 that Salesforce is doing. And it's saying that you can master Salesforce straight from the source. It's a five-day immersive experience. And so I wanted to show this as well, that this is an option for if you want to, you can go to Las Vegas and attend a five-day training course for your certification path. I want to show you the different training tracks here as far as administrators or developers. And so underneath the administrator side of things is the platform app builder track. And then underneath developer as well as the platform app builder track. And then the developer one and developer two tracks. What I'd like to highlight then is that this Platform App Builder certification that you're studying for straddles between the Salesforce Administrator and the Salesforce Developer track. And so the way that Salesforce is positioning this and trying to provide a path for people to follow is that for those that are new to Salesforce, I really recommend this as well, that before pursuing the Platform App Builder certification, it's a good idea to get the Administrator certification. Now it's not a prerequisite and a lot of the things that are on the Administrator certification will be covered in the course of this course, but there are several fundamental things that go untouched in the Platform App Builder certification that are important to know fundamentally on the platform. And so if you look at the study guide as well for this Platform App Builder certification, they recommend that you have six months at least of experience on the platform or the admin certification. So what appears to me the way that Salesforce has chose to structure this learning path for people that want to ultimately be developers would be to start out with the Salesforce Force admin, and that would be the Administrator 201 certification. And then for the Experience Salesforce Administrator track, that would be the Advanced Administrator certification, and that's been called either the 211 or the 301. I'm not even sure. And then from there, the Salesforce Platform App Builder track, which is the old Developer 401. And then over here gets into as well, this would be considered like a beginner developer. And so if you consider yourself a beginner developer on the Salesforce platform, then you're in the right place. If you feel like you do want to address the fundamentals, then you may want to go back and pursue the fundamentals through the admin certification. And so one other note, just real quickly, the advanced administrator certification, which would be this one here that I have my mouse on. That is for someone that really wants to just remain an administrator and not move on into development necessarily. The advanced administrator certification goes into like territory management, collaborative forecasting, and just really in-depth things that some organizations do but are kind of rare instances. And so if you want to pursue more advanced administrator tasks and don't see yourself ultimately being a developer, then that may be the route that you want to go. But the thing to bear in mind as well, and I'll scroll down here for some of the other tracks, such as for marketers and implementers and consultants and architects is this note here it says that the app builder is focused on the declarative programming aspects clicks to code within Salesforce and is a track for administrators looking to further their skills or for a beginning developer to understand the overall elements of the Salesforce platform. So I felt like that this really gave you a good visual for where this certification falls and really nothing's changed as far as the certification paths. They've just changed the name from developer 401 to platform platform app builder. And then the other thing to highlight that they've done is they've split up the advanced developer certification, which was the developer 501 into two different certifications because there was such a huge chasm or gap between the developer 401 and the developer 501. They decided to split it in two to help people traverse the path more effectively. And they're doing the same thing as well for this architect certification. I've heard there's roughly only 200 some odd technical architects that are certified on the Salesforce platform. So they've started to split that path up into more manageable chunks to help people along. And so I'm really working on trying to, I guess, figure out the most effective path based on you know people's background and interest level. So feel free to send me a message through Udemy if you want path advice based on your background and where you ultimately see yourself going. And I can help you save time along your certification pursuits and career pursuits. 
So this particular page has to do with the Salesforce destination success, which at some point this will be in the past once March 6th through 10th is come and gone, but I will provide the link to this in the resources of this lecture. Another thing as well, if I go back to certification.salesforce.com, there's some key things to keep in mind is here's where you would register for an exam. We'll be going into the actual process of registering for an exam, setting up your camera to take the test remotely much later on in this course, but it is at certification.salesforce.com that you can click the link to register for an exam and that'll take you to the Web Assessor website. Then as well, here's the different certification paths that you can take. You can explore that more if you're interested in finding out other certifications that are out there. Here's different maintenance exam schedules, programming assignments. That would be for the Platform Developer 2 certification. Review boards, that would be for some of the technical architect pieces. And then for verification, I want to show this as well. This is where you can verify people's certifications. And so if you go to certification.salesforce.com and click on verification, you can search by name. This is an important addition that Salesforce did about a year and a half, two years ago, something like that, to where you can verify people's certifications. And so I've typed in my name. I'm going click search and show you what my own certification list looks like and from here you get the search results so you can click here to view certifications so here's my certifications and you can see my history back in 2012 attaining the force.com developer certification that's the 401 certification that I was talking about previously so I started and I dove right into this particular certification and so you can do that as well and then after that you see I've got the certified administrator certification then I went for the advanced administrator I felt like in diving right into the developer track that I missed some of the platform fundamentals and was really weak in some areas such as reports and dashboards and needed to improve with security and permission sets and some of those sorts of items that are more in depth in the admin track. But we will be getting into all those things in this course as well. So I've tried to cover as best I can some of these things so you don't have to necessarily do the same thing, but it is ideal to get at least this admin one first. And then from there, I went for the sales cloud and service cloud consultant certifications. And these particular consultant certifications that you see here, they have a prerequisite of the administrator certification as a prereq. And so one of the additional reasons I went ahead and got this certification is so I could get some of these consultant certifications, which make you highly marketable to Salesforce partner companies. And then finally, I went for the platform app builder once they retired. The last date you could register and pass that particular certification was September 14th of 2015. I didn't encourage my own teenage son who was 19 or 18 at the time actually to get this particular certification before Salesforce retired it and so he did that about 10 days before that deadline and he's also been gainfully employed on the Salesforce platform shortly thereafter and so he's just turned 20 but he got hired at the age of 19 with no college uh, as a developer. There is a transition exam for those that do hold the old developer 401 so I wanted to also let you know about that if you have the old force.com developer certification, you can register for a transition exam and that way you can transition from the 401 to the new platform app builder. It's a shortened exam. It has about 20 questions instead of 60 and it costs $100 instead of $200. And so as of the time of this recording, that transition exam still exists. If you can't find it in Web Assessor when you register for the exam, then that would mean that Salesforce has retired that as an option. But I believe that they'll leave that open indefinitely. And then as you can tell, if you do transition over from Force.com Developer to Platform App Builder, that you keep both certifications. So then finally, what I want to show you as well from this certification.salesforce.com is if you click under Credentials for App Builders, I want to show you you how to find the study guide. This is a question I got a lot in my admin course and I made it available in multiple places in the course as a downloadable PDF and links. But here under the credentials for app builders on this landing page, and you can also navigate from here for admins, app builders, etc. It's the same as the drop down here. If you scroll down, you can see this full exam outline can be found in the exam guide. So you click on that. So that's how you can get to the study guide or just download it from the resources section of this lecture. And so then as well, just one more thing to show here 
is that, you know, I'm on the actual page from certification.salesforce.com for their platform app builder certification overview. And they're talking about the exam. Here's all the particulars on the exam, 60 multiple choice questions, 90 minutes allotted to complete the exam. 63% is the passing score, which is a lot harder than you realize at this point if you're new, because you've got to select multiple correct answers, like select three of the five answers that are correct. Sometimes you'll get two out of three correct, but you will miss the entire question. There's no partial credit. Registration fee is $200 US dollars. Retake fee is $100. And then you can't have any hard copy or online materials. So you're on your own based on what you know and your memory. So then no prerequisites. However, we recommend completing the following. So I want to really highlight this. There is a course that's still currently out there that Salesforce offers, and I think it's like $4,000. It's a week-long training where you can go on site and spend a week somewhere in some location, or I think you can take it remotely, virtually online. But it still costs like $4,000 to take. It's a good course. I've watched old versions of the Dev 401 course from like 2011. Actually, I didn't go through this course, but they used to make this course available on iTunes. They shut that down, uh, Salesforce did, and so uh, cheaper alternatives are popping up, such as this course that you're sitting in now. But I just wanted to highlight that they still refer to this course as the Dev 401 course. And then as well, remember the study guide is here with this link. If you click on that F401 course, it'll give you information on that actual course as well. I'll provide the link to that as well in the resources section of this course so that you can find that. Or you could just do a search for this term, building applications with force.com and visual force. As well down here, if you scroll down on this page, there's sample questions for the exam. So actually what I'm going to do through the duration of this course is I'm going to be working you through these sample exam questions right after we cover the core concepts that these questions are derived from. I'll just speak directly to these particular questions. I've avoided providing any sort of certification dumps and there's other courses out there that do that. That's a good way for me to lose all of my certifications because Salesforce would strip me of my certifications and rightly so because if I were to go and just openly share the exam questions then these certifications would mean nothing and it would just devalue the certification and it would just cheapen all the hard work that myself and thousands of other certified individuals have put in to attain these certifications. Salesforce wants their certifications to mean something, and so they really protect and guard their test questions highly. And so unless I accidentally come upon, you know, writing some sample question that's really close to the exam, you'll never find exam questions from me, nor will I give you any, and nor can I recommend other websites for practice exams. I am going to be providing quizzes at the end of each section of this course. And I may work on a final exam at the very end, but that is a very intensive process. And exam question writing is an art form unto itself that I don't have much experience with. So I feel more comfortable just teaching to the concepts so that if you encounter a question that is like this on the actual exam, if you understand the underlying concepts, you will know how to discern the correct answer regardless of how the question is worded or what the different options are as far as selecting the right answer or answers. And so please don't ask me for dumps for the certification exam. It's not going to happen. There's only two sample questions here on this page, but on the exam guide, there's more. More sample questions are available in the exam guide. And so since Salesforce makes those particular questions publicly available, I am going to have lectures devoted to each of these. They won't fall in the exact order that appear in the exam guide. They'll fall in the order of this course where it makes sense to discuss those particular questions. I'll talk you through what the right answers are and why. Also be looking for quizzes at the end of each section of this course. And then as well, I'm going to go ahead and make the next lecture a helpful practice activity. And that's where I'll provide you with the download links for this study guide. And then as well, I'm going to provide you the link to more information on this course as far as the Dev 401 course provided by Salesforce. 
so that you can see what that course covers. You can see that it's still the Dev 401 certification, even though they've called it Platform App Builder. You can also compare the cost of what you would pay for that course compared to the course that you're currently in, and hopefully you appreciate that. And finally, I'll provide you with the link as well for the Destination Success Conference that is in March of 2017 in Las Vegas. And that is in the next lecture, which is a text lecture. So pay attention to that, click through to the links, get your materials, and then I'll see you on the other side as we talk through the study guide and what the future holds as you work through this course.